Hello, squatties. How are you doing? Welcome to Facts and Two Cents. This is Petal. I hope you are all doing great. Happy Saturday. And what is going on in the world? Well, um, I don't know. Our faves are silent, but I don't know. I cannot get over this photo for no particular reason at all. I just wanted to look at this photo. <laughs> I don't know. There's just such power to this photo. There's just such, and of course, we know that this is Prince Harry um, of a couple of days ago speaking to NATO and uh, addressing NATO about the Invictus Games. And I don't know. There's just such power to it. And of course, that's Harry on the screen. It's hard to make him out, really. But that's Harry on the screen uh, addressing NATO and part of the. Invictus team was at the conference physically, but Harry was addressing him because he was in California. And so it is just such a power thing that is just like, ooh, power to Harry. So I don't know. I just, for no particular reason, I just keep looking at this photo. It's just, I love it. 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 And so hopefully you guys have gotten the chance to read the full press release from NATO and the full press release for, oh, and I forgot to post it in our community page. I promised I would. And then I forgot to put it in there. So sorry, I will try to get it in there today. I apologize. I meant to do that and I forgot, but that is happening. And so very, very, very exciting for Harry. Look forward to the Invictus Games, obviously, in February in Vancouver, Whistler. Hope you are excited as well. So anyways, what else is happening? <laughs> I saw this yesterday and I almost passed out. Hence the title of my... <laughs> of this podcast, Prince Harry, Princess Meghan's and Diana's balding redhead hottie. <laughs> this is the funniest thing I've seen in a long time. So Family Feud did, you know, if you in the U.S. or even if you're uh, outside of the U.S. and uh, you've heard of Family Feud, maybe you have. It's a game show in the U.S. where Steve Harvey, who is the host, asks families come on the show and ask them questions about different topics, and they have to pick the top answers. And so this topic was top six things people know about Prince Harry, and that's of obviously people in the U.S. And we've tried to tell and so many times tried to explain to many British people who are just absolutely convinced that the royal family plays this huge role in Harry and Meghan's life in the U.S. and that the U.S. just falling all over themselves about Harry and his relationship with his family. And we're trying to tell you, no, that's not how America thinks. <laughs> And this is such an accurate portrayal of how America thinks about Prince Harry and the things that they associate with Prince Harry and the people they associate Prince Harry with Prince Harry. And none of that include any of the others on Shutter Island. And so the top answer, you know, actually the guy in red is the one who got the top answer, is that he is married to Meghan. That's what the most people in America know about Prince Harry, apart from his charity stuff. Actually, a lot of less people know about his charity stuff. And more people obviously know that he is married to Meghan. And second on the list, that he is Princess Diana's son. <laughs> that is, those are the only people that America associates with Prince Harry. They don't associate him with the others on Shutter Island. The majority of America do not know or care about the others in Shutter Island. Case in point, one of the family members who I thought was a good answer said Prince William is his brother. That was not on the list. Sh even more shockingly, was the fact that someone even, and actually that was a great answer, that he's the grandson of Queen Elizabeth. Even she is not on the list. <laughs> That's how much they don't associate any of that stuff to Prince Harry. The only thing on Shutter Island that they associate with Prince Harry, and that is because his name is a prince, is that he is the prince of, <laughs> of England. That's it. He's a prince. And you see, duh. His name is literally Prince Harry. <laughs> I love it. He's a prince, duh. <laughs> 
the number four? He's a hottie. The majority, especially the younger version, the younger Americans, that's one of the things they will say about Harry. He's a hottie. <laughs> and the last one on the list, number six, is I'm sure Harry is cringing if he saw this because, you know, Harry and his hair, that he is balding, <laughs> which is obvious. He talks about it all the time, but Harry is attached to his hair. Now, if I was Harry, and I've said it before, Harry, just lose the hair, dude. You'd be such a cool, hot, balding man. Not balding, but bald man. So get rid of the balding thing and do just do bald. And he would be amazing. You look amazing bald. But Harry, you know, I think he attaches his hair to youth. And he is very much obsessed with youth. And so, and his youth. And so, you know, maybe one day he will decide to lose the last whiskers that are on his head. But I think he should embrace the bald and lose the balding part. But again, from this list is really how Americans see Prince Harry. That he's married to Meghan, he's Princess Diana's son, he's a redhead, he's a prince, duh, and a balding hottie. <laughs> Again, not even Queen Elizabeth made the list. And that gives you a pretty good and accurate view of how Americans see Prince Harry. They love Prince Harry and he's just, you know, he's Meghan's husband and Princess Diana's son. That's the only one of them. And, and that's the sad part about that is Princess Diana has been dead for over 25 years. And yet she's the only one of the others that P Americans associate with Prince Harry. They don't even consider the others. They don't even consider Queen Betty. Poor Queen Betty is all rolling in her grave thinking, but that was my favorite grandson. <laughs> how are y'all not, not going to associate me with Prince Harry? That's just wrong. I can imagine Prince, uh, Queen Elizabeth having that face on, even in, you know, buried where she's buried. <laughs> it's like, are you serious? But yeah, that's how that's how America sees Prince Harry. They don't associate him with the others. It's so hilarious, and I love it. I absolutely love it. So, what else is happening? Talking about Prince Harry, uh, I mentioned this in the last episode, and I didn't. Uh, I was outside, so I didn't get a chance to uh, pull up this article. I was reading other articles, but I didn't get the chance to pull up this article. So I'm just gonna move my banner here and. Um, read this. But uh, this is from Team Nigeria. President Tinubu reaffirms strong support for Team Nigeria for 2025 Invictus Games in Vancouver, which is fantastic. I think the uh, reporter there is Joel Ajayi. Um, so he says, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has, has pledged a comprehensive support for Nigeria team as they prepare to compete in the Invictus Games set to take place in Vancouver, Canada in 2025. Representing the president, the Honorable Abu but Issa, uh, Senior Special Assistant on Special Needs and Equality Opportunities, delivered this message of assurance during a sports training week organized by Africa Unconquered Foundation. And Africa Unconquered Foundation is... Um, Foul was founded by uh, Derek Kobana. We talked about Derek last episode, who was wishing um, David Weissman a happy birthday. And so it goes on to say the honorary Issa emphasize that the President Tinubu's administration remains deeply committed to inclusivity and to supporting servicemen and women who inspire the nation with their bravery and resilience. Honorable Issa to highlighted a recent moment of significance when Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex, and Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, visited Nigeria, underscoring the country's support for the Invictus Games. Prince Harry's initiative to establish the Invictus Games offers a space where wounded and injured military personnel can experience healing and achievement through sports. Their visit shone a light on Nigeria's dedication to the Invictus Games, reflecting the spirit of our servicemen and women he remarked, President Tinubu's administration is firmly committed to supporting our athletes, ensuring they receive the resources they need and celebrating their journey to success. And that's part of Team Nigeria. They don't know if that's the whole team, 
but that's uh, definitely part of them celebrating and um, actually training for the games. Again, uh, we remember Harry and Meghan's trip to Nigeria with Invictus and also Meghan connecting with her roots, but mainly the trip was about Invictus and really shining a light on the Invictus program there and the incredible men and women who are recovering in many different ways in Nigeria and also too with the Nigerian government participating and really going all out to make sure they take care of their wounded and injured servicemen and women. So kudos to Nigeria and kudos to President Tinubu for his continued support and really advocacy for these men and women. In. So yeah, Team Nigeria, I look forward to seeing you all next year, Lord willing. What else is going on? Well, talk about uh, Megan and Harry traveling around. We remember, uh, what is it, May, they were in uh, Colombia, and yeah, in Colombia. And so one of the things that hap happened when they were there, this was announced that they were going to be a digital conference to be taking place in Colombia later in the year. Well, the lady in, later in the year has arrived. And this week, this coming week on November 6th, there, um, the digital conference is going to be taking place about online safety for children. That is going to be taking place and all of these organizations are part of sponsoring it and some of these people are going to be speaking as part of the conference focusing and highlighting safety for children online and one of the organizations that's going to be part of that is as you can see the big circle or the big oblongs <laughs> shape at the bottom there where it says parents network that uh it's so funny it's it's kind of sm uh, written small so you may hopefully you're able to see it but it's the archwell foundation's parents network and of course that's the parents network that harry and megan uh started with a group of parents who've lost children due to online bullying or harm in some way. And they are going to be part of that conference. And so Safe Online posted this. It says, we are proud to be joined by over 15 expert organizations to host the satellite event Act for Online Safety for Children in Bogota, Colombia. Join us for this historic opportunity. And of course, part of the group is Archwell's The Parents Network, as you see at the bottom there. And a little bit more about it. It says, in case of online child abuse or report events, it says, join us for a safe for a safe digital future for our child. On November 6th, 11 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., it says, Safe Online, the brave movement, We Protect Global Alliance, with support from over 15 other partners, are hosting Safe Digital Futures for Children, tackling online harms through joint global action. The satellite event will leverage and build momentum towards a global ministerial conference on ending violence against children on the 7th to 8th of November. Uh, it says this event will bring together policymakers, practitioners, civil society, researchers, industry members, operators, media, as well as survivors and youth groups. So this is all going to be taking place again, again from, I guess, the 6th straight through the 8th, uh, this conference. And Amy Neville, as you see at the bottom there, Amy Neville, one of the parents from the Archwell Foundation's Parents Network, will be speaking at the event. And if there's a long list of people that's going to be speaking at this event. You can actually sign up. It's going to be live streamed. I will put the link in our community page. I will remember, I promise, to put the link in our community page. So if you'd like to uh, be there again, it's going to um, November 6th, 11 to 4. It's going to be happening. Uh, you can sign up and tune in uh, online. So definitely incredible. Again, uh, Kudos to Archwell for being a part of this, for uh, just really staying in there in making sure our children are safe, especially online. So, yes, Archwell, what else is happening? Oh, <laughs> jumping over the Shutter Island for a second. <laughs> While all faves are doing great things in the U.S., uh, one of the things that's happening, we talked about this the last episode, is Prince William and his um, 
new initiative of ending homelessness in the UK. And great idea in, in the sense of, okay, that's, you know, it's a good thing to want to end homelessness. But as we talked about before, the way they've gone about this is like cringe. It's like, oh gosh, again, it's like snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. <laughs> It's just like, eeks. It's just been crazy with these great, ridiculous documentaries and all of that stuff, which has basically landed like a lead. And people are like, what? You know, even the sycophants are having a difficult time swallowing this nonsense. I mean, the idea of ending homelessness, just the thought of it or working towards this is great. I mean, I can't knock that and I don't knock his, whether, you know, he says he has a desire for it and I don't, you know, look, if he has a desire for it, great. But it's like, they have not been able to come up with a plan that you know could actually work. And so one of the things that, uh, apart from this crazy documentary, or at least one of the things with this documentary is the fact that apparently in the documentary, obviously I'm in the US, so I haven't seen it yet. One of the things in the documentary was there was a rec apparently a recording of Republic staff uh, CEO Graham Smith in an interview with uh, LBC criticizing Williams, you know, this initiative of William, who, again, gets all these millions from the public purse, then coming to lecture people about homelessness. And so he was critiquing it. And so that is actually part of the documentary where William basically, instead of addressing what Graham Smith was saying and his critique, he basically bats it away like, oh, there's always going to be criticism, but that's the thing that drives me forward. Instead of taking time to listen to the critique and to be able to, well, okay, this is the criticism. How do I, one, listen to it, take it in and see way solutions around what the critique is about instead of just batting it away and claiming that, oh, that's the thing that, you know, there's going to be, there are going to be people that criticize him and that's the thing that drive him forward. Well, you got to understand this, the critique is coming from people who are one on the ground and that can help you to think clearly about what you're doing and people can help you to really, if you listen to the critique that he is making, it can really help you to see like, okay, maybe the plan that I have is coming from a perspective of a person who has all of these millions, as opposed to people who are underground and who have to live these lives every day. So what Graham Smith, uh, seeing that Prince, Prince Williams used his critique of him and basically batted it away, decided to write a letter to Prince Williams. Like since he didn't, you know, what he said didn't register and it was just used as a way to, for William to claim that, oh, they are just criticism and he's just going to move forward. He wrote Prince William this very, very long letter, you know, requesting a meeting so that they could talk face to face about what the critique is. And if you know Graham, Graham has been, you know, he's the uh, CEO for the Republic Group and he's a vocal critic. They are the Republican Party, wanted to basically kick the monarchy out and replace it for this particular reason, because the kind of money that the royal family are taking in is exactly the thing that is that is stripping money away from taking care of the homeless. About That's one of the reasons why you have all these homeless on the street, because the almost or over 500 million per year that is being given to the royal family should be the thing that is going to address the homeless situation. So William and the royal family are standing in the way of this very issue that William is claiming he's going to fix. Well, how are you going to fix it when you are taking the money that the people need to fix the situation? And so this is Graham's criticism. So this is a little part of Graham's letter. It says, my criticism, and this is the letter that he sent to Prince William. He says, my criticism cited in the documentary was one part of a wider challenge to you to understand that the monarchy is part of the problem. 
that to suggest homelessness and poverty can be solved without addressing the deeper causes of political, social, and economic inequality is harmful to the longer-term cause of eradicating poverty and ensuring everyone has a safe, secure home. Charity is not unnecessary in addressing homelessness, but it can only ever be a band-aid lifting individuals out of poverty, helping people in crisis, and so on. However, in the long term, poverty will only be eliminated through government action and investment. To suggest otherwise is to misdirect the debate and to draw focus away from the real solutions. The problem you have, however, and the root of these criticisms is that the government action is political, controversial, and costs money. While you are unlikely to want to wade into political debates about what actions the government should take, your position is undermined because the monarchy is estimated to cost as much as 510 million pounds a year, including your personal income from the duchy. Accusations of hypocrisy arise because the monarchy is draining away funds for the private and personal use of one family that could be used to lift thousands out of poverty. You're asking people to contribute to charity while those same people are contributing to your personal wealth and privilege. And that's part of the thing that William and the royal family, one, either doesn't get, or two, refuses to acknowledge. And I believe it's the two refuses to acknowledge. They are part of the problem. That 510 million is what is draining the public purse. And that 510 million, how many thousands of people could have homes if they did not, if the government did not give the royal family 100, 510 million pounds? And you notice when you, they talk about the privy purse and they talk about um, the money going to the royal family per year, they only mention 100 and something. Well, now it's going to go up to 125 million. They don't mention the other 400 and something million, which is a lot of big part of security and other stuff that they don't mention. And so Republic staff have been on them and on them and on them. And they keep citing this 510 million, which is closer to what the royal family get, gets a year. To do what? L almost nothing. And if you look at even this whole um, homelessness thing, again, William only pledged 3 million. How are you going to eradicate homelessness with only 3 million pounds? When your family is literally taking in 510 million pounds a year, on top of that, you have the duchy, which is really not even theirs. It's not their personal property. And if you believe Graham's book, which I which I've talked about before, Graham wrote a whole book, and part of the book was on the duchy, the duchy of Cornwall and Lancaster and stuff. King Charles and they like to claim that it's theirs, that is their personal land. It is not. That is public land that is given to them that they are allowed to use and take the profit as income. But really, technically, the duchies are public land. And so not only are they getting 510 million pounds, they're also every year, William and Charles and them, they're taking in over 20 million pounds on top of the 510 million pounds. And then you're going to turn around and tell people, oh, yeah, I'm going to tell you how to how to eradicate homelessness with only three million pounds. This whole thing. And so that's why Graham has been on it so much about eliminating the monarchy, because they are a drain on the country. They are a drain on the resources. The return of the that investment is not there. And so the my vast majority of people are suffering. There should not be food banks in the UK. There should not be all these charity stuff. There should not be in need of it. And the only reason they're in need of it is the wasteful 510 million that they're giving to the royal family that they don't need. They have all of this property and all of this land. And apparently there's supposed to be this documentary coming out. Who knows? Maybe the royal family have blocked it again about the royal finance that's going to be coming out, I think, in the UK on Channel 4 and out, 
so people will understand when we've talked about this before about all of the things that they that they've owned that they own that a lot of British people are just not aware of or they're so apathetic they you know they haven't really paid attention to the kind of vast wealth that the royal family has and it is a drain to be able to, to get, then on top of all of that give them 510 million pounds a year when people can't you know they're living in tents and can't feed their families Again, this is part of a letter Graham Smith wrote to him since William cited him in his documentary. Let us meet and talk a real, let, let's have a real discussion about what is the cause of this and the solutions that and the things that need to happen to be able to solve this issue. This is not, oh, we'll do it part of the you know Royal Foundation, this charity organization. Uh-uh. If you really want to go, then you got to go, you got to go a bit political. You got to go and advocate for this. You got to go and advocate for major changes in the government to be able to eradicate this. Part of that is y'all going to have to forfeit your 510 million pounds that you get per year because you don't need it. You already have 25 million from the duchies. You don't need this. On top of that, y'all don't do a whole lot. <laughs> Harry and Meghan are in the U.S. and are doing a whole lot more and are being a whole lot more effective than you guys are doing there. So, yeah. So hopefully, oh, who knows? I'm sure William and Kensington Palace are going to be like, nope, you're the people that uh, want to kick us out. We are not meeting with you. And of course, this is why his initiatives are failing. Case in point, we talked about this the other day broadcast William Homeless Charity, William Homelessness Doc takes in 1.5 million. The UK has over 56 million people, maybe 57 million people. Only 1.5 million chose to watch William's show. This is the future king who they claim is so popular in the, U in the UK. Only 1.5. And notice what it says again. Wednesday ITV title opens well behind the 2.5 million slot average. The average for that time slot is 2.4 million. The most popular royal and future king could not even make the average of 2.4 million people who care about what he has to say about the homeless, about eradicating homelessness. And if that is bad, and if you look on the right, this is this addresses the second part or part two of their homeless documentary. Uh, so this is a little part of the article. It says it was ahead of the second and final episode of ITV's stripped Prince William weekend and homelessness, which dipped from 1.5 million <laughs> to 1.2 million, shy of the 1.8 million slot average. Again. It was bad enough that the first the first episode was 1.5. The second part of it was even worse. It slipped down to 1.2 <laughs> million people cared enough to watch William preach to them about hopelessness. Thank you, Joseph Ann, for posting this. This is one of hers. I forgot to put her um, thing there, but she's the one that posted this on her uh, X page. And it's just, again... The UK has fit over 56 million people and their sycophantic tabloid always want to scream about how popular William is and how popular his initiatives are and how much, how much it's uh, better than what Prince Harry has to offer. And all he could get was 1.5 and 1.2 million people who to care enough to watch his, to watch his documentary. And that speaks volumes. So whenever you see those ridiculous polls, and I'm sure squatties, if you're still believing in those nonsense polls, shame, 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 shame. So when you see those nonsense polls about how popular the royal family is and all of that, nonsense, absolutely nonsense. And to even, <laughs> not to kick William while he's down, but there was another site that um, sort of did a comparison with that, uh, that, that time slot at ITV. Camilla had a documentary thing, something about her in the country or something like that. In that time slot for ITV, that scored 2 million people. Even that beat out William 
Camilla's documentary. And then they compared it to Harry when Harry did the um, interview with Tom Bradby for when he was promoting Spare last year, that got 4 million. So again, when you come back to those ridiculous polls about Prince William and his popularity, look back at this and you realize that's nonsense. That's absolutely nonsense. When you poll of all royalists and then you come out into the, you know, you put that up against the real world polls about how really how popular William is, it doesn't stand up. And again, if you look back, you know, and again, he put this out on Disney Plus for the American audience. And then you look at what, you know, what we were just looking at for Family Feud, how Americans think of Prince Harry. Doesn't even, these people don't even, <laughs> they don't even figure into it. Fake royal reporter and, and tabloid polls compared to the real world analysis of really where William and the rest of the royal family stand. And this gives you a very stark reality of where things stand with them. Anyways, that's it, guys. I just want to, again, give a huge shout out to Church Nelly as she is going through really um, di a difficult time right now. As I mentioned before, and if you don't know, she was recently diagnosed with stage four cancer. So we are all praying for you, Church Nelly. We love you. Um, please um, know that we're all here for you, uh, putting our arms around you and lifting you up in prayer. So I just wanted to let Trish Nelly know. And to all of our other squaddies who are going through challenges, there's just a lot of stuff going on in the world right now. And so many people are going through so many challenges. So please let us know what, uh, you know, where, what else is going on in your life so we can all be praying for you as well. But I love you guys. That's it. Thank you so much to our awesome moderators, Lydia, Church, Nelly, Karen M, Cookies and Cream, and Black Queen. You are awesome. Thank you so much uh, to our Two Cents crew who support the channel on a monthly basis. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you so much in every way. Thank you, guys. Have a great day, and I will chat with you next time. Bye.